In today's video, I'll be showing you how to install macOS on a desktop PC. macOS is widely popular because of the proprietary apps as well as the look and feel of macOS itself. I'll be installing Big Sur on an AMD Ryzen 3 1300X and an AMD RX 570, but you can choose to use an older version of macOS if you'd like. You'll need a few things before we get started. Firstly, you'll need a desktop PC with Windows 10 installed. You do need to have macOS supported hardware, so check the link in the description to see if your hardware is supported. Laptop users will not be able to follow this guide. You'll also need a 4GB USB driver larger and an internet connection. Ethernet is strongly preferred, but if you have a macOS supported Wi-Fi card, you can opt to use that as well. I'll also mention a few things before we start. You'll be erasing all data off the drive that you're going to install macOS on, so make sure that you remove any data that you need off of it. I would also recommend watching my Before You Hackintosh video, as it goes through a lot of things that you should take note of before you Hackintosh. Lastly, if Big Sur does not work, check the Google Doc in the description below, as it has a lot of guides and links for helpful tips on how to solve problems. If it really doesn't work, then try Catalina instead, as Big Sur introduces a lot of new security features, so your mileage may vary. All right, let's begin. To start, we'll need to install Python in order to run some programs. You can do that by downloading it from the link in the description below. When you install it, make sure that you check install to the path. If you don't do this, it may not work. Alternatively, if it doesn't work, you can try downloading Python from the Microsoft Store. Next, download OpenCore package from the link in the description below and extract it. This will have a lot of files that we need in order to create our installer. Navigate to Utilities, and then hold Shift and right-click on the Mac Recovery folder, then select Copy as Path. Open a command prompt by pressing the Windows key and typing CMD. We're now going to navigate into the Mac Recovery folder and run a program. Type CD and then Space, then Paste, and then press Enter. This will get us into the Mac Recovery folder. Now depending on the macOS version that you want to install, you'll type in different things. Follow the link in the description for downloading macOS, and then scroll down a bit until you see some macOS versions and some code. Copy the line of code that has the macOS version that you want, in my case I would choose Big Sur, and paste it into the command line. It will begin to download some necessary files for macOS. While that's downloading, we'll need to prep our USB and format it in order to get it ready for the installer. Download Rufus from the link in the description below. When you open it, select the USB drive that you're going to make the installer on, and change the boot selection to non-bootable. Change the file system to FAT32, and then start. We won't actually be using Rufus for anything other than formatting our drive. After it finishes formatting, open up the USB folder and delete the contents inside. Next, make a new folder on it called com.apple.recovery.boot. Once the previous files are done downloading, open up OpenCore Package, then navigate to Utilities, and then Mac Recovery, and you'll see two files that either start with Base System or Recovery Image. Move both of those into the folder that you just made. Then open the OpenCore Package folder again, then open the X64 folder, and move the EFI folder inside onto the root of the USB. The remaining work will be done in this folder. Open up the EFI folder, then navigate to OC, then Drivers, and remove everything except for OpenRuntime.EFI. Go back to the OC folder and open the Tools folder, and remove everything except for OpenShell.EFI. Now we'll begin downloading the necessary files in order to boot macOS. Download hfsplus.efi from the description and move it into the drivers folder under efi slash oc. HFS Plus is needed to see HFS volumes, which is used for things like macOS recovery partitions. Next, we'll download some kexts or kernel extensions. These help to facilitate different things about our hardware and to make sure that they work in macOS. All of the kexts are linked in the description below, and all of them need to be put in the EFI slash OC slash kexts folder on your USB stick. Start with Virtual SMC. 
This emulates the SMC on real Macs, and it's absolutely necessary in order for us to boot. Download the release version, and if you're using an Intel CPU, move both Virtual SMC and SMC Super IO into the KEXT folder. If you're using an AMD CPU, only move Virtual SMC. Ignore all the other KEXTs in the folder. Next, we'll need to download Lulu. Download the release version and move over the KEXT into the KEXT folder. We'll also need Whatever Green, which will handle graphics related things for Hackintosh, Apple ALC, which will handle audio, and if you're using an Intel based system, you'll also need USB Inject All as well. AMD users and non ASRock motherboards that are Skylake and above do not need USB Inject All. If you have a motherboard that is H370, B360, H310, X79, X99, or if you have a non-B460 or Z490 ASRock motherboard, you'll also need XHCI unsupported. You'll also need an Ethernet KEX, which depends on what type of Ethernet port you have. I have Realtek Gigabit Ethernet, so I'll download Realtek RTL8111. I'll leave a link in the description that guides you on which one to choose. Additionally, if you have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, I'll also leave a guide to KEX in the description below. So here's what my KEX folder looks like. Since I'm on AMD, I have Virtual SMC, Lulu, Whatevergreen, Apple ALC, and Realtek RTL8111. We'll also need SSD T's, which patch certain things about our system in order to make it work in macOS. The SSD T link in the description below will guide you on which one to use. For example, I'm on a desktop AMD Ryzen system, so I would choose this row, meaning I would need SSD T-EC-USBX. Since I'm not on a B550 or A520 motherboard, I do not need SSDTs-CPU-R. Here I'm using SSDT time to easily compile my SSDTs. All the SSDTs will need to go in the EFI slash OC slash ACPI folder on your USB stick. Lastly, you'll need to configure your config.plist. This is specific to each generation of CPU, so I will leave a link on how to do it in the description below. Make sure you also do the necessary BIOS settings as well. I'd recommend pausing this video, doing the config.plist, and then coming back once you're ready to continue with the installation process. All right, welcome back everyone. If you're done with your config.plist, go ahead and use the OC Sanity Checker in the link in the description below to verify that your config.plist is all ready to go. Shut down your PC and boot off of the USB drive using the boot menu. When you reach a menu, boot off of the first option. You'll see a bunch of text rolling on the screen and then you should boot into macOS recovery. We'll first need to erase our drive to install macOS. Begin by opening Disk Utility, and then selecting View, and then Show All Devices at the top. Next, select the name of your drive and erase the disk. Format it as GUID Partition Table and APFS. Once it's done erasing, back out of Disk Utility and continue with the installation. You will need to have an internet connection in order to install macOS. It could take anywhere from 30 minutes to a few hours. Once it's done installing, it will automatically reboot. Boot off of your USB drive again, and then this time select macOS installer. It will begin to finish the installation of macOS. Again, it will restart once it is done. Boot off of your USB drive again, and choose macOS installer again. It will restart a third time, and this time choose the name of your drive to boot off of. You'll then be able to go through the regular setup like a normal Mac. If Apple ID doesn't work, just skip it for now. And now we're in macOS. 
there's only one thing left to do and that's move the EFI files from the USB drive onto your SSD so that way you don't have to boot off of the USB drive. Start by downloading mount EFI and then run mount EFI command. If it shows an error about security, open system preferences and then security and then click open anyway. Choose option B to mount the EFI folder of your SSD, then open Finder and drag the EFI folder only from your USB stick onto the mounted EFI folder. If you try to move the com.apple.recovery.boot folder, it will give an error saying there is not enough space. Once you're done, shut down your PC, unplug your USB stick, and you should be able to boot off of your SSD now. If you're having any trouble, I will leave a Google Doc in the description below that has a bunch of links and guides for Hackintoshing. Alternatively, you can join my Discord from the link in the description below and ask me questions there. Alright, good luck Hackintoshing everyone, don't forget to stay safe.